Hello everyone this is Kamal Ramnani from Tax Schooling and today I will be talking about metaplasia meta means change and plasia means formation of cell so metaplasia is a cellular adaptation in which there is changed cellular type due to any stress so what is metaplasia metaplasia is a cellular adaptation a cellular adaptation What is metaplasia? It is a cellular adaptation. Which cellular adaptation? A cellular adaptation in which we get or there is changed cellular type. The formation of cell is changed or the type of cell is changed. New cells are formed in which there is changed cellular type, cellular type due to due to any stress. In metaplasia, uh, why does metaplasia occur? Metaplasia occur to withstand. or to handle the stress if there is any stress if there is any stress what kind of stress we will study in a while that if there is any kind of stress and that any kind of stress we have to handle that stress or we have to withstand that stress then then that stress is handled by metaplasia for example we have an example of there is a trachea for example this is a trachea this is its bronchi and here are its lungs and this person is a chain smoker this person is a chain smoker we all know the cellular type or the epithelium of trachea and the bronchi is respiratory epithelium or pseudo stratified pseudo stratified pseudo stratified columnar epithelium then this person is a chain smoker he smokes the noxious substance or the dangerous substance that are present in the smoke of a cigarette that cause the damage to these cells this cause damage to these cells and that to withstand or handle to handle the situation the basal cells or the stem cells of the trachea produce the another type of cellular adaptation produce another type of cells which are the stratified columnar cells stratified squamous cells what happens this is there's a person who has trachea is trachea and lungs he is a daily smoker the noxious substance present in in the smoke the tobacco and other many dangerous substance that cause damage to the epithelium of the trachea to handle the situation to withstand the situation what happens that the basal cells or the stem cells of the trachea cause the formation of new type of cells or the chain type of cells that is the stratified squamous cell so let me tell you about a smoker's respiratory trachea what happens there for example this is the normal uh, columnar cells present in the respiratory tract of that patient uh, that person who is the chain smoker when the chemical substance the smoke comes in from the air from the respiratory tract so what happens the chemical substance the noxious substance present in the smoke what they cause they cause the normal columnar cell to change into the squamous cell the noxious substance can damage these normal columnar cells pseudo stratified columnar cells who have cilia present over there they can damage these cells that's why we have the stratified squamous cells which are best for the protection which can withstand or handle the situation now the second example which we see in the metaplasia is for example we have the bile duct or we have the pancreatic duct or we have the duct of any salivary gland so that duct contain also the epithelium and it contains the columnar epithelium they contain the columnar epithelium the columnar epithelium when when uh, the the duct of bile duct or the pancreatic duct or the salivary duct when it contains a stone for example due to any reason there is a stone in their duct so what happens this stone tries to damage the cells which are adjacent to the stone and due to handle the situation to withstand the situation what happens the stem cells present in their duct change the cellular type and they change this columnar cells into the squamous stratified stratified squamous cells we all know that straight stratified squamous cells can easily withstand the situation and number third example which is the very excellent example and very common example given in metaplasia that is of that is of barrett's esophagus for example this is the esophagus which is coming down as a tube and that is the sphincter and here we have the stomach 
due to the dysfunction of the cardiac sphincter present at the stomach end of the esophagus what happens that acid reflux into the esophagus and when acid reflux the strato, uh, in the esophagus the epithelium present the epithelium present in the esophagus is the epithelium present in the uh, esophagus is squamous epithelium and that epithelium cannot withstand with the acid coming from the stomach so what happens this this squamous epithelium is changed into another epithelium that is the columnar epithelium why they are changed into the columnar epithelium because columnar epithelium has goblet cell which are mucin producing and this mucin producing can handle the acid which is coming from the paratesophagus as we all know that metaplasia is a reversible for example if a smoker leaves smoking its its uh, metaplasic cell the stratified squamous cell will again regain its position and if the barrett if the cardiac sphincter again become functioning and no acid comes back from the uh, into the esophagus so this columnar cell again regain the squamous cell if this doesn't happens if the metaplasia does not reverse it back into its original cell then what happens that met that metaplasia leads to the cancer or the carcin carcinoma first it leads to the dysplasia and then it leads to the carcinoma so remember this point the metaplasia if it is irreversible if it does not gain its own original uh, cell which which was present then it goes it further goes into the carcinoma and the fourth example which we have in metaplasia that is myostasis that is myostasis ossificans in this in this condition what happens that if we have a bone for example here we have a bone and that bone that skeletal bone has muscle attached to it that skeletal bone has muscle attached to it now what happens there is a fracture in this bone for example there is a fracture in this bone what happens due to this fracture in the bone the blood vessels present in the muscles the blood vessels present in the muscles are also hemorrhaged or are also affected then the chemical substance which are which comes out of this blood vessel the component or the inflammatory cells uh, which comes out of this this blood vessel what they cause they cause the stem cells of these muscles the mesenchyme cells or the mesenchyme stem cells which should make the fibroblast cells now make the now they does not make the fibroblast cells but they make the ossificant cells or the osteoblast cells and that osteoblast cells lead to formation of bone or cartilage within the muscle so what is myostasis ossificans myostasis ossificans is production of bone or cartilage within the mesenchyme tissues how it happens when there is a fracture in the bone or the mus with bone and the muscle so what happens the blood arteries of that muscle damage and the many components the uh, component leaves from that artery that cause the mesenchyme stem cells to reprogram from fibroblast cells into the osteoblast cells and they form the bone or cartilage that the connective tissue within the mesenchyme tissue that is the myostasis ossificans see this is myostasis ossificans what happens this is a bone and this is somehow the muscles attached to it what happens that here i don't know whether you can see it or not here there is a muscle which has been damaged and that muscles that muscle after during its healing time or during his repairing has formed a cartilage or bone within the muscle and the formation of cartilage and bone within the muscle is known as myostasis ossificans as we know that as the hemorrhage would occur here and the chemical substance uh, would cause the mesenchyme stem cells to change from fibroblastic cells into the osteoblastic cell and this has caused the formation of bone within muscle